What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Rad Company. It's been a couple weeks. Actually, it's been a, probably a month since I've done an episode of this. I got really held back on it, so I'm thankful for all these guests that are still hanging in there, waiting for me to schedule them out. So truly appreciated. I want to stop and say what's up to everybody in the house before I bring my guests on because you guys don't want to miss it. Um, these two guys have been doing this for a while. We're going to learn a little bit about them, what they're doing, and some of the cool stuff they're doing from their end. So going back to the chat, I'm going to see Rob Romano, the lost boy. What's up, man? I love seeing you hook up with PVD Hara. Yeah, cool cats. Went to a screening that they did, hosted at the Park Cinema in Cranston. It was awesome for the thing. That's awesome, man. Still bummed I missed the Lost Boy show. Yeah, that was the one that I went to. It was awesome, man. Um, very good turnout for that event. Very, very cool. Mick Hara, what is going on? Chris Snyder, what's up, man? Movie Misfits. Yeah, hit that like button, man. Hit it up. Witch Hunter, what's going on? How are you guys? So, again, if you're not familiar with uh, PVD Hara, they're actually local to me. Like, we live in the same state. It's actually pretty crazy. Um, how close that we really are. So um, if you guys didn't know, I did an event with them probably like a month ago. Um, we did it at Deadbeats. It's a horror bar in Providence, Rhode Island. And uh, we did a little live commentary for Joe Bob Briggs. And it was a fun event. And it was kind of the first time we ever did something like that together. So um, there was a little tech issues and whatnot. It was very loud in there. So if you check that out, it was pretty fun. And I know you guys liked it. But um, now we can kind of dial it back a little bit and talk to them and you guys are going to be able to hear them loud and clear this time and kind of tell their story and what they've got going on. Dream emulator. What is going on? Heck yeah. Look at this. I did not know that. Wow. You're from Providence. Not anymore though. Right. Let me know. What's up Punisher Batman fan. So if you guys are from the new England area, uh, Rhode Island, Massachusetts area, let me know in the chat. All right, I'm going to bring these dudes in now to talk to you guys. Again, I usually like to keep this about an hour for Rad Company. So uh, make sure you're in here and ask away on questions, and I'll try to get in um, to the chat as we go. So we're going to bring it in. We've got Brandon and Dave. What is going on, dudes? Welcome to Rad Company. What's going on, man? We appreciate you having us on. What's up, Garrett? And what's up, man? Um, of course. So, guys, we wanted to do this for a while. Actually, we had this planned even before we did that event at Deadbeats. So yes. like yeah. this was something yeah. that we wanted to do uh, before we actually kind of linked up, which was definitely a, a cool thing to do and um, such a fun event. I hope we can do more um, of those because the vibe at that place was was cool. And it was kind of fun as the night went on and the people got a little more drinks in them and they were <laughs> yeah. you know, running <laughs> yeah. behind the table and trying to get involved. I think it was a pretty cool little uh, event. Definitely, definitely got yeah. better as it went along for sure. That was interesting at one point. <laughs> <laughs> some questionable uh, shit going on that was awesome yeah. it was cool now have you guys been back there at all since then i haven't uh, been back yet uh no i don't think i have either i haven't really been going out much anyway though so like yeah. kind of our events are I haven't been yeah back. <laughs> yeah our events are kind of usually like my my night out um once in a while i'll make it out but yeah yeah i like, gotta get I like back the though. aesthetics you guys got going on this is nice it, it, it vibes with what we got going on in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, dude, wait. I'm so confused right now because um, what's up, Gus? And fight the good fight. I mean, I know you are from here. Are you saying you were? I'm so confused. Fight the good fight. You're from Cumberland? You were? Let me let me know about that. I'm very confused <laughs> now. Um, let me see. Dreams. I live just outside of this. Isn't it? Really? Oh, okay that is funny you so you're from providence we are this is where we're from here what are we supposed we need to do some kind of big meetup i guess all these people like yeah hey. people coming friday into night <laughs> friday night all right so that's one of the big reasons we are here tonight i want to make sure to get these guys in now because the one of the things that they're doing that i think is just really really cool especially for the horror community in general is they're doing like these live events where they'll play a movie and people will get together and, and just watch it and you know, it's it's an event that people have, you know, tables set up with merch and sometimes they have, you know, special things dedicated for the movie. Like I went to the Lost Boys event because, um, again, it's my favorite movie of all time. But what really got me to like jump on it was when they showcased this Lost Boys exclusive beer that they were going to do. I'm like, dude, I need that for my collection. I mean, what what is this thing? You know, it's yeah. blood red. So yeah. I made sure to get there. Like, um, is that something you guys do on all your events or is it just kind of whenever you have 
access to do something like that. Those are exclusive. Yeah, it kind of varies on um, our ability to kind of plan it out ahead of time because um, brewing beer takes time. So like mm -hmm. um, their interest in doing the certain beers that we're pitching at them, like sometimes I've come up with some kind of crazy ideas and they'll be like, oh, uh, that might work or no, I don't think we can. Um, so previously we did like a green sour that we called creature feature um, yeah. on and that was kind of like brandon was there like a reason we did that or just we wanted to try doing a, a beer at the time i think i wanted to kind of sh uh showcase you know the slime from our logo like the pvd horror yeah. kind of set it out set the tone because like if you know if you look at our logo you know the green's always popping out so i want to kind of go with a sour ale you know so they really didn't have sour ales over there. So I wanted to sit there and try to push something different. And so that would be like my drink of choice sometimes having a beer. So we did the pop-up what... shop of horrors too, the vendor event. Yeah. And like, yep. you know, obviously pop-up shop of horrors, you think um, mm -hmm. like green for Audrey and stuff like that. So it's, I think that kind of like was a great uh, time to release it. And then we did the other one with, uh, there was a, another brewery within the same, like there's two basic breweries inside of there and they were supposed to do a purple, dark beer for us um mm -hmm. and it ended up not working out as purple and just was black but it was it was a valid attempt i'll give him credit for it but um the beer was still good it just wasn't didn't come out purple but it worked out too because uh the can was actually like a freddy versus jason type can and it also yeah. released like the week before we did uh freddy versus jason at the brewery so it all came together yeah, I like so, that concept of having stuff like that, because, you know, being in a in the collector market, especially in the mm -hmm. horror community, it's like those are the type of things that people like, oh, wow, I can have, you know, a, a Freddy versus Jason beer while I watch the movie. Like it's just and, and again, I have them and the the Elm Street one. And it, to me, it's more of like a collectible yeah. thing at this point, too, you know, to yeah. have those things there. Because oh, there yeah. The one the one that you that I gave you, Garrett, last time mm -hmm. I saw you was um, that was actually the Terracon um right. dedicated beer so that was another one too so there's been four in total we just they wouldn't they weren't we were supposed to have our logo on that one and um cardi's doesn't allow any other promotion on when they're you know promoting something so they asked um the brewery to take our logo off so but that is crazy though that you're able to <laughs> make a relationship with some of these people the breweries itself or you know horror conventions to get exclusive beers for their event like i just think that's just a cool concept like i wouldn't even know where to start with anything like that you know so nah. the fact that there's a beer of elm street beer with the terracon logo on it i think mm. it's just cool in general you know because Absolutely. that's like an exclusive thing to the event and i think that's a really cool thing that you guys are doing and you're bringing a lot of people out and together when i'm living in the smallest state in the u in the u.s and i think to myself oh i'm just like like one of a few right that are mm -hmm. like that give a shit about this stuff and when you do these events and you promote them and you showcase that, no, there's more people in this area that give a shit about this stuff. And yeah. what's even crazier about the whole thing that you're doing that and bringing these people, these like-minded people together is that, like I said, when I think like I'm just one of a few, man, I don't know if you guys know, but Dave down below me and I have, have basically known each other since we were like little kids. Like yeah. we, we went to school together and not once in my life did I ever think that he was into horror movies like ever. So yeah. it's so weird that we've linked up now. Like if you would have asked me 20 years ago, if I'd be sitting here with, with him on my, on my podcast show, talking about horror movies, I'd have, I would have thought you were nuts. Right. So that's, what's even crazier is that you don't even know who's out there that are into this kind of stuff. Yeah. I think if you would ask me 20 years ago, if, if I would be on a podcast in general, talking about horror, I'd be like, <laughs> no, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> um, in general, like, yeah, it's something that I know Brandon and I kind of talk about that all the time, but it's like, I don't know. It's like something I never really thought that would be like able to like be more than just like this hobby where I watch movies and I, you know, talk about them with coworkers or friends or whatever. Yeah. Um, so the fact that we can sit here now and like actually have a forum to like talk to people about them, like it's kind of surreal. And sometimes we get lost in like the busyness of everything. And I take a step back and I'm like, holy shit, dude, I'm like able to talk to all these people that I've watched for years or, you know, or, or new and up and coming people that are, you yeah. know, going to do stuff. And it's like, it's cool. Um, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's like, you know, it's a lot of work at times, but it's definitely worth it. The, the things that we've had opportunities to do, I would never 
you know trade for a second so it's been cool yeah like it's crazy like today we released a, an episode and i had a, had the chance to interview uh barnaby clay which is uh karen o's husband from the band the yeah yeah yeahs you know what i mean and he released his new film the seating so just being able to have like this you know platform to do things like that is pretty cool you know and that's what's even more nuts about this is like you guys both said is that um being in this kind of platform and all of a sudden now you you're like how do i have access to some of these people to even have mm -hmm. a conversation where if you look back and you think to yourself even just watching some of these movies like oh it just seems like a far away land yeah. where it's like you can connect so easily to people now sometimes and it's almost like scary that you yeah. like think about all the people that you had done his show and that's the one thing that you guys do as well like you guys do a lot of interviews a lot Mm -hmm. And think about all the people you've been able to have on your show that you probably thought like, you know, why would they want to come on here and talk to us about X, <laughs> Y, and Z? So yeah, you've made yeah. that work and you know, you're, you guys are popping off interviews all the time and it's, it's actually, you know, crazy for me to even think that you guys are doing that much stuff because I know just being by myself and just doing my own content, let alone interviews, it's like, I feel like my time is like very limited. So <sighs> Well, do you guys like uh, <laughs> i know I've, you guys do kind of split and and say hey you know what like whatever you can get done get done i'll get done when yeah. i can get done and when we can be together we'll be together so that kind of helps i guess the content aspect of it yeah. so how do you guys manage that well usually depending on who's coming on the show we have a time limit you know what i mean so we kind of like get everything all set and kind of get it squared away uh me and dave we check our schedules and see like you know hey are you free to this day you know and then so if not uh if it doesn't work out sometimes like i might take an interview or dave might take an interview you know because i have kids and stuff like that so and we both work i work overnights and stuff so it can be challenging at times so but we make it work you know so overall like like I, like you said you do this stuff by yourself i can't even imagine it do, doing it by myself you know what i mean because it's like it's it's so crazy and hectic so but i just you know i'm happy that i have a, a co-host that we can kind of just build off each other and kind of like continue yeah. to conquer everything we, we're doing yeah we kind of like we both are like stretched pretty thin so like no. if we didn't weren't able to like divide and conquer at times i we'd have to turn down stuff and i'm i, I we i think both of us are kind of like i don't really want to turn down any opportunity that comes right, our yeah, way yeah, yeah. so if somebody's asking to you know be interviewed or come on the show to promote something it's like i want to say yes so We'll try mm -hmm. to make it work, but it's it's a struggle. Like, yeah, sometimes sure. it's, some weeks are like, damn, I'm I hope I can get a couple weeks off after. But that's not usually the case. <laughs> it's like no, we, I, we made another job for ourselves. We're nuts. I don't know yeah. why we did this sometimes, but 100 percent, though, you're you're yeah. you're exactly on point. And as much as like you look at it and you're like from a financial aspect, it's like, is this is this job really worth it? Right. Like you look at mm -hmm. it from that end. And I feel the same way. Like when I when I started this thing, it was basically just to kind of showcase my collection because I was home from the yeah. pandemic. I was bored. I knew I had all this stuff. I had video equipment I got from, you know, to utilize for work during the pandemic. And then I had some friends that did YouTube. So I kind of just jumped in. And then all of a sudden, when you start, you know, meeting these like minded people, you start finding people that are very similar interests than you and they have cool stuff and they want to collaborate and stuff. And then all of a sudden you see the people that show up for your shows and you know, you don't want to disappoint them. And then you're coming up with ideas and all of a sudden you're looking at my, your schedule every day and it's like, you've got your work stuff. And then all yeah. of a sudden, like on every day, you're like, well, where can I squeeze recording yeah. in? Where can I squeeze live yeah. shows in? Where can I like, I'm running into the problem now where my, I, I have so many ideas, like they're all written here and I'm looking and I'm like, I don't even know when I'm going to fit all these in, yep. you know, yeah. based on the time allotted. And, I'm not doing really any interviews and stuff like that. So, but like you said, you don't want to say no to any opportunities. Like I actually, uh, Wednesdays are usually like my, I have a lot of the day off and then I work for a little bit. So like I did an interview this morning and then I've got you guys now, but it's mm -hmm. one of those things that I didn't want to say no to this opportunity because like you said, you know, it could lead to, to something else. So you don't want to no. ever be like, Oh, I'm not going to do it. And then miss out on a, maybe a possible bigger opportunity later down the road. So I've that's exactly it. You never yeah. know what opportunity is going to arise because of something that, you know, you involved yeah. yourself in. So like we've, we've had that happen so many times and it's been such like a valuable life lesson that mm -hmm. now anytime something comes my way, my immediate response is typically yes. It used to be mm -hmm. like, eh, I don't know, or I don't know if I could do that. Now it's like, I've learned, you just got to say yes and do it. Um, unless it's like, 
going to hurt you in some way. Say yes, sure. just say yes. And you never, you never know who you're going to meet or what that, who that person knows and all that stuff. And you guys nope. usually, do you have a pretty good formula now that you've been doing it for so long? Like when you have guests, it's pretty like easy or do you have to do a lot of like research if you're not sure about who this person is or what they've done? Or like, do you do a lot of back work on that? Or do you guys kind of have a formula where like, we can just, we can get through this pretty, pretty easy. I, we yeah, we so probably have two totally different answers. So I'm, <laughs> I'm curious to hear, man, yeah. to be honest with yeah. you. Yeah. So like whenever we get anyone on the show, you know I mean? My main thing is I'm going, I'm diving in. If I don't know the person... I'm digging in to to figure out every little thing about them. And then so when I hit them with a question, you know, it's always just like, oh, wow. Like, you knew that. And so it's 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 just the way that you approach everything. Um, my, I'm just always just ready. I'm always locked in. And so when I'm doing that, I'm also we also have like probably like four other interviews lined up. I'm sitting here just banging a bunch of stuff, getting notes ready for every every single one of them. So to kind of you know kind of brainstorm and kind of get things going so it's a good time though yeah mm -hmm. and i i take sort of an opposite approach um mm -hmm. i used to do a lot more uh digging in and now i kind of just get some basic stuff and i focus more on just trying to be present um and ask follow-up questions uh sure. or like comment off that but like also uh some one of my jobs involves doing this like all day long um, so I, I, I'm a therapist, I'm having one-on-one -on -one com conversations with people and like actively like reflecting on what they just said and trying to dig in deeper. So I've kind of taken that approach into the interview process and I, I find it's more my, like if it it's more my personality. Um, so I think that's what it's all about though. Like I think Brandon and I have both different styles, but it works for us in our, in our interview styles. Like it wouldn't make sense for me to do what Brandon does. Cause that wouldn't it wouldn't fit for me and the, and vice versa. So mm -hmm. um, I think that's kind of what makes it work too. Cause it right. makes each episode a little different and have a different flavor. So sure. Yeah. I think using those skill sets that you have is huge because like you said, like you might be able to walk into an interview and, and just the basics of knowing how to, you know, interact and talk with people. Like it probably is like, if, even if you happen to be super unprepared, you can make it work. Right. Because yeah. you're just yeah. so, mm -hmm used to you know being in that kind of environment to just kind of keep a conversation flowing as long as they're willing to talk um i can usually <laughs> find something but we've had some groups actually you know what is the hardest thing? the more the more people the harder it is um no, like you probably once, right this. yeah exactly right um and you'll probably know exactly what i'm talking about like when there's too many people and like you let's say you ask a question and there's like four guests mm -hmm. everybody's looking at each other like who's gonna answer first there's these weird lags and pauses that kill any momentum. Mm -hmm. um, if one person like just gives short answers, then uh, and someone else feels like they have to like um, compensate. So they'll over talk and you don't want to like have that person take over the whole interview. So you try to get the other people involved. It just it's a the more people, the harder it is, I think. Um, uh, totally one to two agree. people is the best, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. Cool That's the power people. of editing, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, guys, um, again, we talked briefly about um, the interview and stuff like that. Now, are you finding that you're getting a lot of people interested in coming on and talking about a, a project? Or are you guys also brainstorming and be like, you know, this is coming up, this is coming up. Can we find or get somebody to talk about that? you know, and you guys are out trying to contact others. Like, is it kind of working both ways? You guys have an idea of like, this would be cool because this yeah. person's got something coming out or we have something coming up. So a nice lead into our event would be to interview somebody from that movie or whatever. Like, are you guys kind of working both angles at that point? Yeah. So um, like you said, we, we, we basically do both ways, you know, so usually before when we first started off we would reach out now it seems like everybody's hitting us up you know we have emails and everything or like movies that's set so it's it's actually we're in a good space because it's like everything's kind of lining up by itself and then like it gives us time to kind of work on other episodes and things that we want to do yeah. and then if like you said if we want to reach out to someone because we have an event coming up which we just had a cool episode for brain scan. Uh, uh, we reached out, you know, and we got that lined up. So it worked out. Yeah. Yeah. This month, I think we challenged ourselves a little bit to, to reach out more. Cause we had kind of, yeah. um, you know, kind of taken a little break from doing that so much. Um, reaching out kind of sucks cause it involves getting turned down. Like, sure. Oh yeah. 
like nine out of 10 times, <laughs> but that one, that one night you land, you're like, hell yeah, that's awesome. Um, and yeah. this month we happened to get lucky and we landed like three to four that we really wanted. Um, you know, nothing huge, but also just like cool ones that we probably have mentioned in passing, like for the past couple of years, like, Oh, it'd be great to get that person on. And they actually are happening right now. So that was, that was good. Mm -hmm. Um, that felt good, but it can also like break you down a little bit when you, you know, get told or no, or it's, this you person's told no, in. or just, or just ignored, you know, ignored or just ignored. Well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's but another one too. Yeah. But the thing is, it's like, it, it shouldn't matter because it's like when we, when they say no, it's like somehow, some way down the road, they end up back on the show. Yeah. So like, that's never, you know what I mean? I think that I don't get let down or anything like mm -hmm. that. Cause like, you know, like I said, their project end up on our table somehow, some way. Yeah. So like I have this one lady that I, um, she's a manager for some people and I, my intention is to just email her every four months just for her to tell me no until the day that she finally tells me yes. <laughs> um, cause eventually it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. I know she's just, she's playing hard to get. So I mean, persistence is huge though. I mean, how many times have you been online and an ad for something pop up and you're kind of like, Oh, that's pretty cool. And then you're like, eh, no, nah, I don't need that. And all of a sudden you see it again and again. And finally you're just like, fine, I'm going to get it. Like that happens yeah. to me all the time. It could be yeah. with a t-shirt. Yeah. It could be with something else. Right. Like I, I eventually will be like, you know what? I do need that. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. So, uh, exactly. I mean, sometimes you just can get a continue to roll with it and not be afraid of being turned down. And a lot of people are, you know, so they might hear no once and then never try that person again, where maybe it was just wrong place at wrong time. You know, exactly. Right? Type of thing. Yep. So, um, but before we even talk about the events that you guys have coming up, um, I know we briefed on on you and I knowing each other for a while, yeah. but how how did you guys get started and how long has this been going on for? Because I didn't really realize it was even a thing until I was kind of in this space. And you guys have been doing this for quite a while. So um, I know you had mentioned to me some of your backstory when we hung out that night. But um, mm -hmm. I, I, for the people that are checking this out, like how did this all start for you guys? And again, when it came to you guys growing up, especially like Dave, because again, I, I, I yeah. knew him, like, did you feel that you were into this stuff, but like none of your friends were. So for a long time, you just kind of like, just kept it to yourself. Absolutely. Cause I knew, I know the people yeah. you hung out with in school. Right. Yeah. And I look at that and I'm like, yeah. well, I don't, I don't know if did, did anybody know that like you had like a fandom for this kind of stuff? Uh, I had a, f a couple of friends, like they were so yeah, middle, like middle school, high school, some friends knew that I had like basic interest, but like, I don't even think I understood how much like I gravitated to horror. Like that would just be the thing I would end up watching. Or those were the movies I want to see at the movies. Like I, um, I'll joke around like, uh, with Brandon sometimes, like uh, so many movies I saw on dates, like in high school were horror movies, like, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, bride of Chucky, uh, Halloween, one, like one of Halloween resurrection, like so many movies that came out in that like nineties timeframe, um, urban <laughs> legends, like those were all dates that we went on with yeah, people, same. but I always, I always wanted to go to see a horror movie with them. Um, like I would spend my time watching a lot of horror movies on repeat, which is so weird because I think about now I don't watch anything on repeat. Uh, maybe that's just because we have to watch new stuff all the time. But like back then I used to rewatch like Scream and all the nightmare mm -hmm. movies like um, and I never really thought about it that much because none of my friends were into it. It was just a thing I did. Um, it wasn't until like later I was like, I really love this shit, actually. And like um, and then I went to a convention with I was like, no, nah, this is a whole society of this of this stuff and um this is awesome so i think that's kind of when i really embraced it uh it's just something i always loved and i never really realized how much how important it was to me or how much it was like kind of um my comfort space mm -hmm. you know that thing that like if i'm stressed out i want to i want to go do this if i'm overwhelmed i want to go zone out and watch this um so like yeah i think i learned it later in life my friends always just thought I was weird. So that's, that's about it. <laughs> well, it's funny that you say that because, uh, um, my co-host on my podcast, Mel always busts my balls because like every time I'm trying to talk about like a movie that I saw in the theater, it's always like, well, I was on a date and I saw this. Yeah. Like, would, would you go on dates like every weekend? <laughs> no, right? but we did though. I <laughs> and feel the thing like is, right? now that you say it, I'm like, they must think what's going on in Cumberland. These guys are just like <laughs> so many dates going yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, I, I feel like that's all we had to do is like go to the movies. Like, what else were we going to do? Uh, um, man, I mean, I can remember Showcase Cinema, man. Every, every, every weekend yes. going on dates, yep. Blair Witch Project was out. I mean, I remember seeing that like day one, right? Like, Jason X. Yes. I remember all, you know, yeah. all that stuff that, you know, I, I was, was probably in the things. theater uh, when you saw Blair Witch. <laughs> I, yes, I saw that For in real. the theater. Yeah. 
That is yeah. so funny. And uh, and I know you guys had kind of met through work, and that must have been just kind of like. And I think you said, I think Brandon said it was almost like a random conversation that this yeah. all kind of started. Yeah. Brandon. Yeah. So we worked at a a group home, and uh, the what um the basement had flooded, so we had to take like like teams and everything like that. So we would break up with the staff and kind of go downstairs and kind of like take care of the flood, the shop vacs. Uh, myself and Dave were up to kind of go downstairs on the shift and we were just sitting down there talking. He was also new. So it was kind of yeah. like trying to fail him on. I'm like, shit, I don't know what the fuck to talk about with this guy. <laughs> I don't even know who this dude is. So I'm Dave's like, quick, all right. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, dude, you like horror movies? Yeah. <laughs> He's just like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, all right. So then it kind of went on from there. So we were sitting there just talking. And then so some of the kids were actually making fun of us saying, we heard you guys downstairs talking. What yeah. are you guys doing? <laughs> you guys, you guys, you guys shut up. <laughs> <laughs> like, shut no, up. Brandon, I was thinking about it. I was because like I I got um my horror half sleeve and I was yeah. wondering if maybe that's why we started talking about it. I wonder if I had just started getting it because I got it when we were working. Together. No, I don't think I don't think I didn't, I didn't see it. Yet. Yeah, yeah. All right. it was, just it was around that time. Thing. Yeah. But it, yeah, so then it was really just by chance that we started talking yeah. about it. Now then from that, there, I would sit there and just come in with a bunch of movies because I would just burn so many movies. It just got to the point where like I had movies before they released and everything. And then I remember this guy had asked me for a few movies. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> uh, yeah, hey, we can get I can get that one. And then he asked, what did you ask me for? It was like, yeah, this is this is my favorite. I asked you for a Serbian film. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. Uh, yeah. you, you watched what you watch I'm half si of it or as the, as it's sitting there downloading and I'm like, all right, I'm sitting there watching. It. I'm like, OK. And then it got to the baby scene. I'm just like, yo, this dude's a fucking clown. Like, what, <laughs> I, I can't watch this shit, man. I can't I can't do it. I shut for it second. off and I I came into work and I handed it to him and go, yeah, you have fun with this, buddy. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> I thought you were gonna say you asked for murder set pieces or something. You asked this oh, guy, no. like, you know, I got this, I got this bootlegger guy at my work that's just hooking me up with all these horror movies that I don't want to buy. <laughs> this guy no, trying to get me flagged online. <laughs> did you? I think you got me one of the August Undergrounds too, because I have that I as a so. burned, a burned copy. Um, yeah. That well, was all like, coming back out, so you can go get them all now on Blu-ray. Yeah, yeah, that was the only it. one that I didn't buy was one. I can't remember which one of it of the trilogy it was, but I was like at the time we were uh when we met i was like super into all the gore like the gore stuff yeah. like trying to test myself how far can i go sure. yeah Superman film yeah. i didn't like that wasn't the worst that i no, saw. It wasn't but it was just like the concept of all yeah that yeah going on. it was just a little bit too much i've never seen point. it man i've never oh. i've never seen that and i've never seen salo and these are two things that everybody that comes into the chat are like they'll they'll, they'll like throw up super chats to try to see how much they can pay me to watch the damn thing and do like a mm. live commentary or whatever did you but... watch human centipede 2 i have yeah that yeah. i think that's actually grosser than most stuff just because of all the feces and nah. all that stuff what did I just watch that they um well one of the things that they they paid me to watch, which is something I had seen, I had owned it, but um when I saw Cannibal Holocaust for the first time, I said there's no way in hell I'm ever watching this movie again. Like hmm. those those animals have you? Like, I cannot. So they so uh I do a lot of stuff with uh Dead Pit Radio and so they the people watching the show, they they I don't know, donated X amount of money to get me to do it and I I did it and watched it again. And it was, you know, it was the first time I had seen it in probably twenty years. Yeah, you know. So yeah. Um, I mean, it was, the, it's the the animal stuff still sucks. If that's, I if I had to watch the, the movie again, I would yeah. I would do like you can like turn it off kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and then I watched what else did they? Somebody bought me the Vinegar Syndrome. Oh, what the heck movie was it? It was like that Asian one that just came out on like 4K not too long ago. Um, it's, it's not um the guinea pig movies, is it? No. Um, it might have been. Let me see. Guys in the chat, which movie did I watch again that you guys bought me from uh, Vinegar Syndrome <laughs> that we did a live commentary, the <laughs> gross one? Um, shoot, I can't remember the name of it. Now, I need some sure people to be though. buying me movies. <laughs> buying me to watch movies. Because <laughs> they buy think me. it's funny. Because they, they all, they all hey, guys in the chat, I want to buy. I want you guys to buy me a movie too, please. <laughs> but yeah, they all they all get a kick out of watching me squirm like on the couch or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, I don't watch this stuff. Wait, do you do? Um, do you watch it live? No. We've done it before. Yeah, yeah. We'll do like live commentary. So I've seen you do a live commentary. It was um, elves. Here we go. Ebola syndrome. That's what oh, okay. Ebola syndrome. All right. 
<laughs> so yeah. worth watching, Garrett? Oh, worth, uh, worth, uh, yeah, I think you actually like it, to be honest. It wasn't it, it wasn't horrible. It was just, you know, it was a little gross and stuff, but it wasn't the worst. But I mean, it's just not those aren't the type of movies that I watch anymore. Like maybe yeah. when I was in my 20s, I was watching stuff like that. But um, yeah. I don't really watch a lot of that stuff anymore. So, you know, to go back and start watching some of those now, it's just it's it's I'm looking at it from a different lens. But mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you know, sometimes content's content, man. So if it's uh, if the people want to see it, sometimes <laughs> hey, that's just, good content. Yeah. Watching you be all <laughs> uncomfortable. Like, like, what better <laughs> what better content is that than like that's exactly why I think they like it for sure. <laughs> the the <laughs> French films got me into the gore stuff. Yeah, right? yeah. like those were really like my gateway into it. I watched like Inside first, mm -hmm. I think, um, and I was like, oh, I I love this. And then it was like Frontiers, Martyrs, um, High Tension. Luck, yeah, High Tension. Yeah, high tension La Cavalier, I think it's called, was another one. And then from there, I was like, oh, I got to watch everything that I can get my hands on. Um, mm -hmm. And it's been yeah, a while. Was that 2010, around that time, 2008? Yeah stuff yeah, like it a, that so, yeah. it's a weird time in my life <laughs> yeah, well hey, i mean crazy i mean that was around the time i was watching all that stuff too you know yeah. that was that was a big thing like i said that was like you know murder set pieces had just come out then it was yeah. like of course you could get like the un the rated one here but then you had to like dig deep online to find the unrated one and i'm like you know scouring the internet to try to find one you know it was just that's mm -hmm. just kind of how things were and well you know, the ahead. serbian film when that first when that first came out you had to go to like a specific site to be able to get to rent it um to watch it so that's why like that was one i had asked brandon to burn me because like um when it first released like the unrated version you it was hard it was kind of hard to get like it wasn't mm -hmm. like today i feel like that could never happen like we would just have access to it because everything's such just a so wild easy, time like, back then though yeah. too because like even uh my uncle used to do a lot of like burning so like yeah. i remember us like getting the work print for like rob zombies halloween and stuff like yeah. all the ones that you couldn't get and you know and we would we would burn that and make like he'd make covers for it and stuff like that so there was there was a lot of that going on that uh getting different editions and stuff that you just couldn't easily obtain that you can now so was um, it kind yeah. of better in some ways yeah, it was. It, it, oh oh the, oh that like, like to actually work time. for it <laughs> the in, yeah. yeah the inability to just have everything that you want is kind of makes it like everything feels better when like when you watch that movie you've been waiting so long to watch and you finally get a copy of it, it i feel like it's just gratifying that was like part 100%, of the experience 100 yeah. percent. i mean even think about it as a kid like when you would rent a movie or you would rent a video game at the store it was like dude you had to love that game because you weren't getting shit until it yes. was time to get back you know so <laughs> you kind of had to really enjoy it even though if you were like yeah it's not that good i mean you nah. made you made yourself like that thing, yes you know, because you knew it was so important because that's all you had so kind of the same concept but when you work to, for something it's it's more meaningful than if you just kind of handed it you know it's yeah. like anything mm -hmm. life, I guess. um but when did you guys decide like all right we're friends we like horror movies and now now let's actually do something with this because you guys have been and, and where did you start youtube or like an audio podcast so we just started off on Instagram, so we wanted to start off on a podcast. So this was about around like 2015. There was uh, just one pod, one horror podcast at the time, and so I would listen to it. And I I sent this to Dave, and I'm like, check this out. And then so from that point on, it kind of like got our wheels turning. Like, damn, we can do this. Like, like why don't we do something like this? And so it, it started from me trying to figure out myself and Dave and there was another person that we had in the group um we would just sit there and try to sit there and just brainstorm on how we can do things and then it just took so long because our schedule was so different like I said I worked yeah. overnights Dave worked a different shift another guy worked the different hours and so it never like we never connected so I remember it was just like one day I was like in the hospital and then I was just like getting so frustrated because I'm like damn like we need to do something you know what I mean? And then so I just created PVD Horror on all all uh, social media platforms. I'm like, and I sent them the passwords. Here's this. Let's go. We're doing it. Locked in. Go. And we did it. And from then on, like, what was it? Like the first month or two, like, dude, like the, the numbers were just going crazy. The followers are coming in. Uh, we built that community online, you know what I mean? And, and so then it just transitioned into doing movie nights at the breweries where we started to build the community in Rhode Island. And so it just, everything just started to take off and then just started to go the way that we want it to. And the podcast didn't kick off until uh, the pandemic, you know what I mean? Because we had that time, we were down. Yeah. And so then it was just like, all right, now we got to do this because it's, we just, this was the main goal right here. Now let's do it. 
and so now everything just kind of like fell into like how we needed it to be you know yeah. so it all worked out yeah that's awesome now when you guys created the you know pvd for horror for the first time and you went online and stuff like that was it mostly you guys just sharing pictures of horror stuff maybe collection stuff or clips from movies like what were you guys doing I, at that first time I, to get people interested in that i think doing? that's what like grab like people gravitated to is because we kept mm -hmm. it varied there would be like i mean there was stuff even like us doing like like i would sometimes dabble with like cosplay in like you know mm -hmm. some settings and then like sharing other people's uh content and trying to highlight them as you know content creators we did theme posts so we'd have like slept on saturdays um yeah. you know we would each take a turn picking a movie that we felt was kind of underrated and people should check out um each, like so we had like themes and we'd each take turns so people were kind of getting like an idea of who we were and the kind of like as individuals and the kind of horror that we liked um but then a big a big thing that like always drove us was showing off other people's stuff like you know yeah. you you created this thing can we can we uh spotlight it on here and have people check out your page and that i think people appreciated that focus that we gave on not just our own stuff but also like highlighting other people's stuff mm -hmm. so that was always that was always fun um yeah you know what made it easier though is it was all before that algorithm stuff um so yeah, like yeah. we could create a page and people actually saw it Mm -hmm. And now it's like you're fighting to get people to actually see your stuff. Like if if they don't see it for a day, they're never going to see it again. So it's, it's like, tricky, man, huh? yeah, before it was, it felt so much easier, but yeah. it is what it is. You just got to roll with the punches and figure it out. And it and was it probably was... more organic back then, too, because people were, were looking at it and being like, oh, I'm interested in this, where now it's like they're just being shoveled specific things. And like you said, yeah. sometimes things that they're interested in, like may may hit the back burner due to you know, maybe not enough traffic that day before or something like that, you know? Yeah. yeah I think we hit, we hit this. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I was, I was going to say we hit the sweet spot with like starting the pages, like, cause there was some horror pages, but I don't feel like there are as many as there are now, but with the podcast, I feel like by the time we got around to it, unfortunately we were competing with a ton of other podcasts, which mm -hmm. so that always makes it harder. Yeah. It's, and it's weird, you know, cause we're like, I think Instagram and everything, they put you in this box. The al algorithm changes up. It's weird because the people that we started off with, you know, we don't see their content anymore. So now we're stuck in this box. So we have such and such followers and we follow so many people. We see probably around like just the same hundred people on a consistent basis. If we don't sit there and try to reach out, like we have to sit there and go to our following list and look what the person posted. You know what I mean? Manually do it because it's like we're just being fed the same, the same people over and over. And it's and it sucks because there's, there's so many cool people out in the community that I wish that we can sit there and interact with more, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's the same, I'm pretty sure it's the same with us because it's like it, it, unless it's a certain post that takes off, then it's not seen from, from everyone, you know, and it sucks. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I a hundred percent agree because there's a plenty of people that I don't see their stuff on a regular basis. There's people mm -hmm. that have come to me and be like, Hey, you haven't put out a video in a while. I'm like, what do you mean? I put out like three last <laughs> week, you know? And they're like, really? They're like, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen you put anything out in like mm -hmm. probably like a couple weeks. And I said, yeah, that's because you probably didn't watch my last video. So now I'm buried somewhere yes. else. You just don't yeah. see, you know? So yeah. it is tricky how things work like that, where if you, so you'll notice some of your videos or Instagram posts, if one gets really hot, the next couple will probably be hot. But then mm. all of a sudden you might go through a period where like, four in a row you're like what, what did they not like this one like what's the matter you know and <laughs> yeah yeah so you look at it and you're like oh that's interesting that it's you know you go from a thousand views to like 300 in the matter of like a week yes. you know and mm -hmm. it could just be like a couple people didn't watch one of the videos and all of a sudden it just didn't connect with a lot of people's you know um yeah page mm -hmm. or whatever like that so it is it is interesting and you know it is a challenge but i think it's just like anything else it's I look at it in this, uh, this way and it's like consistency is huge. And if you believe in your product, I, f I firmly believe that people will find you at some point. Like, yeah. and <clears throat> you know, as long as people come across your page and they think that you're someone they can connect with then they'll, they'll subscribe and they'll, they'll hang around. You know, if, if they come across your page, watch one video and be like, that was cool, but eh, I don't really connect with this person. Then, then maybe they won't, you know? So I think if you're comfortable with your product, I think the right people will come your way and find yeah, it. So yeah. it's just, there's so many people that give up too early, I think. So it's just one of those things is just being consistent, persistent. And, and it, like you said, you guys have been doing it for a while. So obviously um, you're seeing things evolve a little bit now. 
you know, you said you started with just creating some social media stuff, sharing horror stuff, love for horror. Then all of a sudden you started the podcast. Now all of a sudden you're doing group events and, and movie hosting and stuff. Now, where do you see, like, do you guys have anything in mind where you're like, you know what, this would be what we'd like to do, like kind of like the next step. Is there anything that you guys, you know, look at and be like, this would be cool to kind of do a little bit more of this stuff? Well, <laughs> we're always kind of like, we always, like you said, you have your your ideas that you have on the side. We have the same thing too. So it's just like to the point where it's like, okay, we need to get this off the ground. Uh, what was it? Just back a couple, what, in October, we finally, we were talking about it for so long, c- kicking off like music events. Yeah. And we did that, you know, so um so that's something else that we're going to continue to keep doing you know so trying to build it up and uh get that going and there's just so much other stuff that's coming too so it's just like it's, it's coming soon i don't know yeah, yeah. no yeah. for sure man i mean you you, you got to always kind of be forward thinking sometimes too yeah. and um you know i know you guys have done this because I've, I've seen it firsthand but you know one of the things that i talk about and it's hard because you know the podcast i'm a part of i i really feel like it's it's a strong you know, podcast and element to what I do, but we all mm-hmm. live so far away, right? Like, like my co-host is in Kansas city, Iowa, like we're not close. So to make things like yeah. that work, it, it's, it's hard, you know? So we try to do like yearly meetups so we can kind of go to an event or something like that. And, you know, one of the things that I would love, even if it's just for, for my channel or for the podcast or whatever, like is to find a, a, a convention that matches what I do and just have like a table mm-hmm. or something and just kind of hang out. And I know you guys have done that. Yeah. Right. And, um, do you find that that's a cool thing or do you kind of find that you look at it and you're like, yeah, we don't need to do this anymore. Uh, the last one we did was Terracon, right? Right. Yeah. That yeah. was awesome. Um, I tell you, here's, here's what was the best feeling. And this isn't like a, a brag. This is just like an experience that we had. Mm-hmm. It was, um, that was the first time for like that. It really sunk in that people were coming up and they had, we weren't like selling ourselves. Some people already knew who we were mm-hmm. and that was awesome. Like that was honestly one of my favorite experiences of October. This past October was not like having, cause like normally when we do like things where we're vendors or whatever, like we're just, I have a whole spiel that will, that I'll say. And it's like, I say it on repeat a thousand times and you know, I lose my voice by the time <laughs> uh, it's done. But this time literally people came up and I was like starting to say, and they're like, Oh no, no, no. We've been to one of your events or, Oh no, no, no. I watch your, <laughs> I, I watch. I'm like, are you serious? Like, that's awesome. Um, it, it, like that was like probably the first time I had, we had that many people actually know already who we were. And I, I saw 100% I saw the value of doing it. Like it was just, yeah. it was good for us to kind of see that we're reaching people because that was in you know it was a mass so you know there's Rhode Island people there too but it was sure. also like mass and Connecticut was were there and to see that we were reaching people outside of just Rhode Island um or outside of just the people who come to our events was great and um and for the new people that we met that day like there was a YouTuber that was there taking video uh we were able to connect with him a little bit and just other people like that um I, I it was such a fun experience. I I really enjoyed it. I hope we get to do more of that. Yeah. Now was that something that you guys like... teamed up and said let's do this, or because you kind of hooked up with the beer and all that stuff, you were able to kind of get yourself in there? Like, I mean, I don't even I don't even know how you you would go about it. Would you contact the event and say, hey, I want to pay for a table, or you know, like so... I'm not even sure how that whole thing rides. My brother does it with his band and stuff at mm. video game conventions. So I mean, I yeah. really I don't know how that all works, but they're usually like headlining an event there as like a, mu- a musical act. So they would have a table for the weekend kind of thing. So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Like, is it just something that kind of, you guys have to make the decision to be like, okay, cost this, let's do it for the weekend and see what happens. Or is it all right? Hey, we did this, 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 we have a table. Let's go. So this, this way, this, this year, it was a little different. Um, it was actually our first time being like vendors at Terracon. Yeah. So, but monster expo, we kind of knew, you know, the guys that ran it for a while. So, we were invited to that and kind of help promote it. And uh, for Terracon, it was that, you know, the brewery, they right. caught, they caught the, uh, the wind that the brewery did a lot of horror events due to us. And so Terracon actually reached out, you know, and wanted to collab with them. And so, like I said, it was supposed to be a three headed bear, uh, Terracon, PVD horror and Buttonwoods, but Cardi's came in and, you know that's what happened we had to come off the can but we were able to be vendors and everything like that so you know it yeah. all worked out it, bal- it balanced out yeah. and that's and the the thing that like what brandon was saying with like the with the brewery it's like it's all reciprocal 
So mm-hmm. like we do the events there. It's great for their business. Um, sure. They get they've had a lot of people that go like diehards uh, for their mm-hmm. for their brewery go there all the time. But they initially like started going because of like a horror event, and it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Like um, I like we have some people that go regularly to our events, and they're they're at Buttonwoods like all the time, even on yeah. like, when we're not doing the events, which I think is great. Um, so and Buttonwoods has kind of gotten a little name for themselves as far as being like a, a horror brewery. And like, I think they like that. Um, they're not like they, they dabble. I think we've gotten them more excited about horror. Like when we first met them, mm-hmm. I don't think they were as excited about horror, but they seem to be into it now. And mm-hmm. they definitely, I think it's great. They, they see that there's a market for this and sure. they're, they like fully believe in the stuff that we do. So they're like, I mean, whatever you guys want to do, just do it. At the end of the day, they're making out more than you are. Right. Cause you're, you're, you're feeding them. You know, customers, I, on you know? on some events, yeah, they're doing <laughs> yeah. real well. <laughs> that Lost I mean, Boys event you were at, Gary, that yeah. they, were doing, they did real well that night. And so. and I loved it because, like I said, I I'm such I'm so into gimmicks that like to have the the Lost Boys beer, you go up and you're like, oh, get that. And then all of a sudden, you're ordering food, and the menu is basically all Lost Boys related yeah. items, right? Like they actually mm-hmm. built the menu. You know, David's noodles and all this other yes. shit. That you can oh yeah, get, I, you know? we totally forgot to mention that. Like, that's another oh. uh, part of the whole uh, movie night, and that's that's consistent because Screaming Unicorn, um, the the chef of that is a friend of Jenny, who's the you know uh, works for Buttonwoods, and they're there all uh, like every every time we do one of the movie nights, they're there, and they've been doing these like custom menus. I think Brandon had suggested it when we did Troll Two, right? Yeah. And, just ever just since want, then they've been doing it yeah because i wanted to make sure you know because i know she had her set menus the way that she wanted to do and i was just like look do you think that we can sit there and kind of have the horror themed menu for the movies and everything that we're showing and so she was open to it i kind of like showed her the ropes on like like how to sit there and do it maybe to sit, try this try that try this and then from now on, like she does it herself, you know, so, yeah. so if it's a movie she's never seen before, she'll go in and watch it. And then now her menu is like stacked with like a lot of things that are relatable to the to the films. So it's Dude, pretty cool. I yeah. love it because it goes from an event to an experience, I think, you yeah. know, and especially in the world we live in now is like, you know, even me, like I was taking video and then I made a short afterwards because it's like mm-hmm. it was unique. Right. All of a sudden you're looking at a menu and it's got Lost Boys related food on there that you know, nobody else is going to see is knows what that is or yeah. nobody else has had that before. So it felt like you're you're kind of in a special you know event when you have stuff like that in there. And I, yeah. and I really appreciate that. Are you guys doing anything special for the brain scan show? Because I know when I went to the Lost Boys, it was all outdoors. Now you guys are inside. I don't know how that changes things as far as how busy it is and whatnot it's it's toned down a little bit for this one um because we weren't even sure if we were definitely doing a january movie night um Mm -hmm. they are actually uh moving so their venue is going to be in a different location and that move date has kind of uh been up in the air but we were kind of told a few weeks ago that we can do january so we just put it together there's not going to be like some of the frills there'll still be food still be beer um still be the movie but when we Mm -hmm. do them inside too um typically a smaller crowd the outdoor ones i think people get really excited for that warm weather um Mm -hmm. but i actually i like the indoor ones just as much it's more it's cozy um everybody's you know having a good time and and, um yeah it's it's a little bit of a different vibe than the outdoor ones but i still i still enjoy those quite a bit and that's going to be this friday night at 8 p.m yeah woods brewery and is that that's (laughs) providence right uh cranston Cranston. just just outside of providence like right near the line nice yeah so i mean brain scan fantastic movie i know we're all big fans of that one i can see it i can see your vhs back there yes um (laughs) now are you guys doing other things now like i know everybody's lives are crazy like are you collecting stuff anymore are you diving into physical media stuff are you kind of just hanging on to the stuff you had you pay attention to what's going on you know up up and coming or how are you guys doing with all that stuff because it can get crazy trust me i'm in it yeah Yeah, for me, I kind of slowed down a little bit on it because I was heavy into physical media and uh, I I caught the streaming bug. You know what I mean? I was like, for me, I was like, oh, man, I'm never going to do that. And it just, you know, for my life, I have I have kids. And so I'm always like on the the go. So it just became like easier to stream and just do certain things and kind of have it that way. 
and plus just running out of space you know not having the space to do it and part, yeah. and set have the perfect setup so you know that's one thing i'm a, i want to get back into but it sucks because you know what was it best buy was that they stopped selling physical media and right. stuff like that you know, they did but, oh, yeah. Wow. yeah yeah so that's like the big news story now in the physical media world is that mm. Like if you go to Best Buy right now, it's it's whatever's there is is there, and when it's gone, it's gone, and there's not even yeah. going to be a movie aisle anymore. It's going to be there's already some. I've been to Best Buy's. Um, there's one in Mass that I went to, and there's no 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 movie section at all anymore. It's just gone, and mm. that's a, crazy to think about. You know, when Circuit City closed, that was a bummer because I was mm. like, oh, I was always going to there in Best Buy every Tuesday to get some stuff, and now all of a sudden it's like everything's gone. The only places to get stuff at least locally around here is like Walmart and target and target never mm -hmm. has anything. And, and yeah. I think target's pretty much on the way out too, when it comes to yeah. movies, like their aisle, I think is just an end cap now, it's tiny, but Walmart's going to be the only spot to really get anything like at the store where at least where we are, those yeah. big stores. Yeah. And, uh, everything now is just going to be online. Do you remember a movie stop? Cause when that Dude, closed, when that closed, that's that's when my door closed to physical media a little bit more, you know. I'm gonna so, do a whole show on Movie Stop because Movie uh, Stop was such a huge part of like my collecting at that point. I mean, not only did you go in there and it, it was huge and they had so much stuff, but like they had so much like used stuff for dirt mm -hmm. cheap. Like I could leave there with like 30 titles and be like fifty dollars down, you know, and and that's yeah. it. it. It's crazy. And I used to do you know, they do like the pre-order system. So I'd go in there and look at the little ad and I'll be like, okay, I need this, 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 this. And then, you know, they would just call you and say, okay, come in, your stuff's here. And sometimes you get mm -hmm. it early. And it was, it was great, man. I, I was obsessed with movie stop. And when they closed, yeah. that was a real huge hit. I think. Yep. Yeah. I had the hookup over there. So one of the workers, I would always go in there and just blow so much money and he would just hook me up and take so much money off the prices. And I was just like, oh shit, really? And so then it was just like all the time I was just like, racking up trade-ins yeah. and everything it was great man. yeah it's unfortunate yeah. that was such a cool concept too it's just it just felt like it it felt like it lasted long but it but not long enough like it, mm -hmm. it you know um but so again we have um the event coming up on friday now um there so there's no limited beer or anything for brain scan right you said no no not for this one unfortunately now, hoping so when we they move to the new space, I'm hoping we can get one going for uh one of those early releases, which will, I think is going to be sometime um March or April. I can't remember what it yeah, is. March, or April, somewhere around there. Um, and I'm not going to say what it is, but Garrett, I know it's the one I'm going to pitch if they can do it. I know you're going to want it because it's one of you, a film that I, I know that you're really into. No, nope, but um, <laughs> I'm not going to say what it is either. All I'm right. just going to leave it at that because uh, and you can kind of think about it. But it, um, yeah, hopefully in a few months, we'll have another one. We'll see. So is that is the plan after this this month? When next time you're at Buttonwoods, it'll be at the new location. Um, we are going to have a trivia night on February 21st, uh, Wednesday night at six. Is it six or six thirty? Six six thirty. Six thirty. Um, those are insane. Um, anybody in Rhode Island, Gary, like you guys get a team, uh, and, and come out to Buttonwoods for the trivia nights. We try to put together something really challenging, but also like not so challenging that your friends who don't know a ton about horror are going to be pissed off and bored out of their <laughs> minds. So, um, the first time we really did like go way above and beyond as far as trying to like trick everybody. <laughs> and, um, some people loved it and some people were like, oh, that was kind of really too challenging the next time we did it we toned it down a little bit but we still had something for everybody um but that's like a really fun event it's free um it's you know some mm -hmm. cool prizes and stuff like that that's awesome especially because you you guys actually have to that's a lot of back work on you guys is that on those for those nights right so um for like the trivia stuff we'll get together uh sean uh, who works at Buttonwoods? He, he runs their trivia nights. He does it every Wednesday, regardless. It just, okay. you know, the ones he does for horror, he teams up with us. We'll just get together with him and we can usually bang it out in a couple hours. Um, but we'll do, uh, yeah, we'll do some homework and try to come up with questions ahead of time. Yeah. But I, th I think we got some pretty good questions, not to toot our own horns, but like they're, they're pretty challenging. Yeah. Cause a lot of cool people come out, you know, a lot of people that like, crazy crazy about horror they'll even let us know like oh dude that was a that was a crazy question so i think mm -hmm. that you know we're on the right path to yeah. trivia. yeah 
it's it's a lot of fun actually coming up with the questions is probably the most fun uh part of it for us because mm -hmm. it's it's like trying to it's challenging to like think about like because we'll get like specific people in our head and be like i bet he wouldn't get that like, <laughs> there's this one team they've won the last two times and it's like by, by a landslide they're like uh, like connoisseurs of horror so yeah, like right. we do when we do certain questions we'll have them in mind and be like oh i don't think they'll get that <laughs> speaking of brain scan they actually that was one that tripped them up and i was shocked because that wasn't like s supposed to be a super hard question but we do a picture round and we did um horror like villains and trickster was one of the pictures and they didn't get that one so I, was, yeah. I was a little surprised mm. by that that is cool that sounds like a fun event um yeah, I definitely have to look into into doing that. Too bad, I, and that's the thing. Like, I oh, it's I, Wednesday. I feel though, like doing, you do this. <laughs> I do, I do, but I mean, this is an easy thing. Like, if I had work, that would be different. But this, yeah, I can yeah. just postpone. But um, you know, yeah. it's finding a team, right? Because, like I mm. said, a lot of the times, I feel like everybody that's into the same stuff I am, they all live all the places. This is how I communicate with them. Like, I don't yeah. have a good group of people, uh, locally that would be on on board with this. Like, I might have like two, you know. But um, that's the tough part is that maybe I should spend more time in doing the stuff with you guys because, you know, I will meet more like-minded people over there because like I said, I feel like in, a, in one end, I'm on an Island by myself here uh, in this area. So, I mean, like you, like I said about you guys is what I love is that you've been able to create a community in a place that I didn't think there was a community. So yeah. that, yep. that's, what's cool. And that's why, you know, I really wanted to showcase what you guys are doing, not only just your content and like the interviews you're getting and stuff, but, just what you're doing for the genre in, in this small little area that we all live. Yeah. And um, I think it's awesome. And I hope that, you know, we both can get together and do like another thing at deadbeats or wherever the heck it is, because yeah. I think yeah. once mm -hmm. we kind of get a niche of like how we want to do it and the audio and all this stuff, like I think it, it would be fun events to do like live podcasts and stuff. Yeah, like absolutely. I, I had a blast doing that. As you said, like as the night went on, it definitely, I think we loosened up, everybody else loosened up. Uh, it was funny watching people walk by and being like, what the hell are they doing? But then as the <laughs> night went on, they got like, they all got a little more courage to like come up to us and actually like ask us what we're doing instead of walking mm -hmm. by and just looking at us funny. Mm -hmm. um, but you're, you're exactly right, Gary. The whole point of what we wanted to do was to build a community. Um, it's everything that's happened beyond that is just bonus like us doing right. interviews with people we want to that's a bonus that's like not even what the initial intention was that was just like wow we can actually do that let's do it then um but our initial thing has always been let's build an online community and let's build an in-person community um i love that the in-person thing is actually both have happened but like the, seeing the in-person thing um the way it happened this summer was like really uh just like the pinnacle of i think what we've done so far but i i still think no it can grow even larger um mm -hmm. but some of those yeah. movie events we had like to to get 160 people at a brewery for a, a movie is insane um mm -hmm. so like that to me was speaking volumes about how people were responding and how they wanted some of these events so that was really cool yeah. it was think, it was it was fun as hell when i when i walked in and just saw everybody sitting there and i was like whoa this is a this is a big deal here there's tables there's people selling <laughs> posters mm -hmm. and props and yeah. merch and yeah it was awesome yeah but the thing is it's like it's also it's a, the thing is it's bigger because doing the podcast it was like you know one person when we were leaving uh one of the movie screenings a lady came up to me and she goes you know you guys got me through so much in life mm. with that podcast during the during pandemic. And you guys got me through that when I was going through some hard times. And I was just like, wow, you know what I mean? Like you don't realize how the things that you do affect other people. And even our community for the movie nights, some people don't even come there with friends. And then now they, they have a bunch of friends, you know what I mean? And so it's just like, they, it's just something that just helps them just kind of like, just come from out of that shell there and, and just become, and a whole nother person and be like 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 you were saying before like wow this other people are here like me and so it's just mm -hmm. really cool to kind of sit back and look like what we created on both ends for everyone because at the end of the day you never know what someone else is going through we have this picture uh from the very first movie that we did in 2018 it must have been 2018 no it was 2019 february of 2019 we did mm -hmm. um 19 what is it 1981 my bloody valentine yeah. Um, so we showed that at Revival Brewing in Cranston, a uh, smaller venue. That was like where we started doing them. Uh, we took we had enough people where we could fit everybody into a group photo. So I think it was like 19 in total uh, the very first time we did it. And we thought that was amazing. And that was like, 
we were like, wow, this is this is so big. Like for us, that was that was a great turnout. Um, the amazing thing is the majority of people that were at that event in 2019 still show up to mm -hmm. our events now. Mm -hmm. And that's like, and a lot of them we actually call friends and like we had just yeah. met them that night, you know. It's um, so that's awesome. And that like, you know, I think that's the reason these things continue and we still have motivation to do them. Mm -hmm. No, that's awesome, man. And like I said, you guys are doing great stuff. But before we kind of wrap it up, I wanted to talk to you guys about something, some news that just broke. I don't know what you guys think about it, but did you hear that Silver Scream is now going to be where Rock and Shock was going forward? Yeah, yeah I've seen that in Worcester. Yep. Yeah. That's going to be that's cool. Gonna... I Rock and Shock was like my first convention experience ever. So like I always mm -hmm. have like this special place in my heart for like a horror convention at that at that location. And I know you guys were going there quite a bit too, yes. right? Yep. Yeah. So is that excite you to kind of be able to go back there? Um I mean, it's a great venue space, so like sure. it makes a lot of sense. Um I kind of I'm just a little bummed cuz like I actually if it was still in Danvers this year, I would have I would have gone. Like I wanted to go. I hadn't been um the last time they did the last few times they did it. Um, but you know, Worcester is an easy drive, relatively easy drive. And no. you know, that's a nice I mean, area. So I almost think that cause I went both years. I almost feel that Worcester is an easier ride than where it was now. Yeah. I thought, um, maybe cause I just don't know that area really well, Danvers. And I just think it was in like a hotel, which was a little bit more intimate, but I mean it, I don't know. I think with, I think it's going to do way better. At the, at the new place because you yeah. can see that that they really want it to grow and, and to be something big and i felt like rock and shock was big and then you could kind of see it as the years went on starting to kind of get a little less and less and you know a lot of the same vendors and a lot of the same guests every year mm -hmm. and hopefully you know with with this going into that event it can uh almost revitalize like what that rock and shock was because i thought rock and shock was just a hell of an event especially i was so shocked when they were done with it i was like really yeah. like you, yeah you, there's so much potential still there yeah, because you got the music stuff at you know yeah. on Friday night and Saturday night, so it was cool to go to the event all day, hang around, and then go watch the music at night and stuff. It was cool, and I think what a what a better person to kind of get it running again is Spencer from Ice Nine Kills, because I mean he's got a win win on that whole thing. He gets yeah. people involved in the horror community, and he's his band can play at night, you know. Exactly. Yeah. So, are you guys going to be hitting that up this year, going back yeah. to the old stomping grounds? I, I, I think so. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Do you so let me ask you, do you prefer like that open space uh like convention style that they would do there as opposed to like, for example, like Rhode Island Comic Con felt like very sectioned off and almost sure. like a maze at times. Do you do you prefer that open space? Um, it's funny because I look at the Worcester and I think to myself, this feels good. Um, Rhode Island Comic Con is a little bit too much, I yeah. think. Like I like the more intimate atmosphere, but I think it's just what I'm used to. Like when I go to Monster Mania in New Jersey, it's it was always at a hotel. So you kind of had different rooms and those vendor rooms and stuff. Like mm -hmm. I like that environment, but I do also think that Silver Scream, based on the two times I went, needed more because it was it was still that smaller environment, but like it there wasn't a lot of vendors. There was like two rows of vendors. So I, I could see that like they needed more. They needed to get some bigger you know, name vendors in the house and I could see it growing, but it was just, it was still a little bit too small. Like there wasn't a lot going on. Like where monster mania, they're in a hotel and there's rooms and rooms of vendors, rooms and yeah. rooms of, of celebrities. So mm -hmm. it feels just bigger, even though it's in a, it's in a more compact environment. So, yeah. but I do prefer that over like these huge halls where I actually think that when we went to Terracon, that wasn't bad either. I think that was no. okay. You know, that wasn't too much, but comic-con is brutal man like yeah. <laughs> like it's it's hard to even navigate around you got to go into like the the i don't even know if it's called it i asked i had to ask for directions oh it was yeah i asked for directions last time i was like can you tell me where where to find this and they had to tell me like go into that other building over there and i'm like really that's crazy. third floor other building all yeah the way down. It was, yeah it does get a little bit messy uh, like a place like that so but i'm i'm souped for that so we definitely got to try to talk and get it going we can head down there i would love to oh, go yeah with you guys for oh sure. that'd be great hey uh one last thing uh did you guys see something about lost boys the musical i just yeah. you know what? someone just sent me that today um and i like watched a little of it it's where they should put the v vhs yeah. in yeah. um and it was like right before we went on so i kind of watched like the first couple minutes and then i shut it off so i mean is it 
It's Those just a teaser right. as far as I as I, I saw. I didn't see anything more than just like they put the VHS in, a couple of things show up on the TV as far as like names. I didn't see anything more than that. So I don't know that there is more, but I'm interested to see what that's going to be about. Now, where like would that be? Do you have to like travel to New York to watch something like that? Or is it going to be, would it be something in, like I've never seen, you know, Evil Dead musical. I've never seen all those. So have you guys checked out any of those ones? So uh, we're going to plan on going to see Evil Dead, the musical on uh, February 11th. So yeah. we were putting together a big uh, like field trip style thing. Um, tickets are still on sale, you know, so if you guys want to come up with us, definitely. Where, where is it? Uh, it's going to be in Boston uh, at oh. the, was it the PCA Plaza? Yeah, I, I can't remember the, yeah, the venue itself, but. Yeah, but they basically been going on tour, you know what I mean? So basically what they came to Boston like mid January and then it's staying until the end of February. So I don't know where they're going to go next, but I can probably think that the lost boys is probably going to follow the same style, you know, cause that there's a actual, there's a scream one that's going on right now too. Hmm. So send me the info on that, on that, uh, Boston. Yeah. Okay. okay. Cause that would be cool. I've never seen any of that stuff. I didn't even know what came around here. I thought it would like, I'd have to travel to New York city or something like that to watch yeah. that stuff. But, yeah. um, but guys, I appreciate you guys coming on here. Um, why don't you guys, before we end, just plug where they can find you. Um, the description for their page on YouTube is in the description box. Um, but I know you guys are heavily on Instagram. I'm not sure if Facebook, you're still doing a lot of stuff over there, but let everybody know where they can find you. And then anything you want to say, as far as things that you have coming up, like plug away. Okay. So uh, PVD Horror on all social media. Uh, if you're on Facebook, we have two things. We have PVD Horror. Actually, we have like three or four things, uh, way too many pages. But uh, I'll be honest with you. We are way less active on Facebook. Like the posts are linked from our Instagram to Facebook, so they get up there anyway. But if you guys really want to reach out to us, it's better to reach out to us on Instagram. X, I, I check X pretty frequently. PVD Horror on there as well. Um, TikTok, all, right. all this stuff, threads, uh, email. If you guys want to like send us some info or you have somebody that you know that want you want on the show, PVD horror 401 at gmail.com. Um, we release episodes on YouTube and all podcast streaming platforms at least weekly, sometimes twice a week, depending on how busy we were. And yeah, the episodes vary. We talked a lot about like the interviews we do, but then we also try to mix it up when we have opportunities and time uh, with some of our own stuff. We have one special one where we have our um, followers on social media uh, suggest movies for us to watch. Kind of like Garrett, what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just like whatever crazy movie you think that we haven't seen before and you think we should give a first time watch to. Um, we have a pretty extensive list now that we have to keep up with um of movies that we have to watch and do our little reviews on uh so that's always a fun episode and then we do a horror psych episode which is like uh we take a movie and we talk about all like the mental health aspects of it or you know some kind of themes in there um because that kind of hits for both of us uh working in the human services field and all that stuff so we try to add a little element of that as well so and also look out for uh pvd horror radio that's going to be our new uh, music segment episode. So yes. we're going to be sitting there talking about all, you know, all music genres and everything like that, that how it incorporates horror and, you know, talk about some of the, your favorite songs and stuff like that from your favorite movies. Yeah. Trying to just put in a little bit of all of our favorite stuff into mm -hmm. what we do. So well, that's what makes it enjoyable for you to do continue to do it because you yeah. can just talk about all the shit you like that you don't get to talk yeah. about at work exactly. all the time you know? <laughs> exactly yeah. Yeah. So, so dudes it was awesome having you guys on and again we're definitely going to link up uh again soon and, and guys if you're in the local area uh check it out they're going to be at buttonwoods brewery on friday night at 8 p.m do a little brain scan action so definitely go hit it up and if you do go over there just tell them that you saw them on the show and uh, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us on the live. And anybody coming in on the replay, make sure you guys hit that like button. Go check them out. Subscribe to their channel because, like I said, they've got a ton of interviews on there. I mean, you could be listening to those things all day long. So, guys, thanks for checking us out. This is Garrett at Born to be Rad. And like always, stay rad.